Raised beds are popular because they usually provide better quality soil, less compaction, better drainage, and better ergonomics. But depending on the design, they can get a bad rap for looking unsightly. So good news is that with a little extra effort, we can make something that will work better, last longer, and look pretty awesome if I do say so myself. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to be building a new 14 by three foot raised bed for my front yard garden. I'll include all the items I use, the cut list, dimensions, and links in the description below. Make sure to stick around until the end and I'll do a full cost breakdown of all the materials for this build. Hi guys, I'm April from ReSprout. Like and subscribe for more garden tips and tutorials for my suburban front yard garden where I help you garden like a boss. I have some Douglas fir 2x6s I'm going to be repurposing from my old cold frames for this build. I usually build all my beds in cedar because it's more rot resistant. Redwood and locust are also rot resistant, but like cedar, they're all going to cost more money than straight untreated pine or untreated Douglas fir. For a bunch of reasons, I personally stay away from pressure treated lumber, no matter how tempting the rot resistance or the price is. I'll put some links in the description below, but let me know if you guys want a video on that. Instead, I protect my beds with additional non-toxic wood stabilizer and eco-friendly wood stain. That will be my next video in this series, so stay tuned for that. I've built seven of these suckers so far in the same design, and I found the easiest thing to start with is the long sides. The height here is up to you. My beds are about 17 and a half inches high. I would recommend at least 12 inches high though. My first garden beds were only six inches high. That was really not deep enough for root vegetables like carrots and potatoes I found. Plus you need to account for a couple inches of soil settling. So those six inch high beds end up having like four inches of soil in them. Whereas the 17 and a half high beds will end up having about 13 to 15 inches of soil on them, which is definitely more reasonable. Plus, I might be converting these to self-watering beds, so having that extra height is a good thing. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on that. How high your beds are will also depend on the slope of the area you're installing the beds. You'll want them to be completely level for soil erosion and for watering. In my yard and the way that I was laying out the beds, that meant that I had to have the beds at least 16 inches high just to make up for the slope changes in my yard. For my 17 and a half inch high beds, I cut six 16 foot two by sixes down to 14 feet. I specifically needed these beds to be 14 feet to fit my space, but if you have the room, by all means, skip the cutting and use the entire 16 feet. And yes, before you ask, you absolutely can get 16 foot lumber home in a regular car. I have done it and I have been laughed at in the parking lot. Next, cut six vertical one by four boards to the height of your sides, not including the top railing. So for me, that was 16 and a half inches. The reason we're going with a one by four is because it will match the width of the four by four post, which will be our corners. Place two of the one by fours on a flat surface, like a garage floor or a driveway. Then put three of the long horizontal sideboards over top, making sure that underneath the vertical boards are spaced equally apart at the one third and two third mark, the 56 inch and the 112 inch mark for my 14 foot beds. Okay, so there's a little bit of bowing between the boards, so there's like a, like a little bit of space. So I'm gonna use some clamps and just clamp them real tight together before I put on those vertical boards. Now screw the horizontal boards to the vertical board using two inch exterior screws. Just because we don't want that backboard to split, especially that backboard, make sure you pre-drill with um, drill bits or use self-drilling screws. These are my favorite screws. And yes, I have favorite screws. The reason we're screwing it in from the inside is because we don't want the screws to show on the outside. It gives it a really nice, clean look. Take another one of our vertical boards and screw that to the inside at the center point of the bedside. This is going to be the brace point we're gonna add a center support to later. If your beds are shorter than my 14 foot monsters, you might not need this, but it never hurts. 
side one is done. So just assemble the other side just like we did the first. If you have the room, I like to build them next to each other, which really helps at the assembly stage. screw your corners in like this, but they won't look nearly as cool. And I can tell you from personal experience that that is going to be the first failure point when the wood starts moving. So stick with me here because I really think that these corners are what make these beds so awesome. For the corners, you'll need a single six foot long four by four post. On the end, mark off a one to one and a half inch wide L shaped area on the corner. I use a ruler as my width guide. With a tape measure or chalk line, mark the matching lines along the length of both sides of the post parallel to the edge. These are our cut lines. Set the depth of your circular saw to the depth of the cut. Now cut along the lines on both sides. And if you've set the saw depth just right, the corner piece should pop right out. Woo! If not, reset the depth and recut. Now cut the post down into four pieces that are the height of your bed, which for me was 16 and a half inches. From the inside, screw these corners to the ends of the sides we already built using the two inch exterior screws. All right guys, it's getting easier, I promise. For the short sides, cut six three foot two by sixes. This is the width of the bed. If you do end up going with another bed width, I highly recommend doing it in 12 inch increments since a lot of larger crops like nightshades and brassicas need to be spaced in some denomination of this. 30 inch bed widths are also very popular with in-ground small farmers like Jean-Martin Fortier and Elliot Coleman. My first beds were four feet wide beds, but those were just a little too wide for me to reach comfortably across. When it came to upgrade those beds, I switched over to a three foot wide bed. And that is really the sweet spot for me. So you can make your bed any width that you want, but I would say I would go no wider than four feet because any wider than that, and you just cannot reach inside from either side of it. And then you're gonna be forced to actually get into the bed or sit in the bed in order to work the soil and to add amendments. And then that would compact it and that would cause a whole bunch of other problems that you definitely don't want. And definitely whatever you do, keep your beds all at the same size. That way you can interchange the same row covers and cold frames and insect netting and hoops on all your beds. It will really make your life easier if they're the same size, I promise you. Now, if you guys go with another width, definitely let me know. I would love to hear how your different sizes are working for you. Now stand up the two long sides on their edges. The corner should hold them up. Screw the short boards into the corner post with two inch screws from the inside. If you're working on this project by yourself like I was, a set of pipe clamps are going to be indispensable. Now you guys might not need internal support if your beds are shorter than 14 feet, but I can tell you mine definitely needed it. I found out that I needed bracing in my first beds because when I tried to move my first bed, it actually shifted and became a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. So yeah. Screw the board to those bracing support boards we attached to the center of the sides earlier and screw it in at the lower half so it doesn't peak above the soil. You don't want this board too high or you'll create yourself an annoying obstacle when you're amending soil. Okay, so I know that looks kind of lame as a support beam, but remember, we're gonna have these top railings right here and there's gonna be soil pressing in from the inside. There's gonna be soil pressing in from the outside. So there's actually gonna be a lot more support here than what it seems. Now, you guys know I love my garden bling, so you might think that these top railings are just for looks, but they actually have a whole bunch of purposes. 
One, it protects the top edge of the sidewalls from the elements. Two, they're much easier to replace than the walls when they do wear out, which means your bed is going to last a lot longer. Three, they provide a nice wide flat surface to sit things on like cold frames. Four, you can sit on them much more comfortably. My beds are 24 inches apart, and if I know I'm gonna be out there working for a while, I'll even put a short board between two beds to sit on. And five, the railings add even more stability and keep the bed from warping over time. For the long side railing, you'll need one 16 foot one by six board. Try to get a board that has a chamfered or round edge instead of a square edge. This will prevent splinters and be more comfortable to sit on. If you're using sawhorses, add some sacrificial blocks of wood to the top and set the depth of a circular saw to go just beyond the depth of your board. Rip the board down at center length using the saw. If you have a ripped guide for your circular saw, this will be super helpful. Do the same with a six foot board. These will be the railings on the short sides. Using a miter saw or a miter box and a hand saw, cut a 45 degree angle on one end of all the boards. Line up the mitered end to the corner of the post. You want this to overhang the corner post slightly and the interior as little as possible. The walls should definitely be fully covered though to prevent weather damage. Find the post corner on the other uncut end, mark the 45 degree miter using a speed square and then make that cut. Screw this first rail into the top using the same two inch exterior screws. If you wanna be real fancy, pre-drill with a countersink bit to get a nice unmarred surface. So my first beds that I made, I used nails on the top, just like you would with molding. But after a year or so, I actually had problems with the railing popping up. So I definitely would recommend screws for this. Now follow along the edge of the bed in a circle following the same procedure. Fit the railing on one end, mark the miter on the other end, cut and screw. Now, if you are super pro, the last one is just gonna slide in like butter, baby. Oh yeah. So we are all done. You can enjoy this as is in its natural state, or you can stick around with me to my next video where I waterproof this and stain this black like the rest of my beds. Now, I promised you guys the cost breakdown. Keep in mind, this is if you had to buy all the wood new. If you're a wood hoarder like me and you already have lumber on hand from other projects, this will cut down the price a lot. And obviously, if your dimensions are different, the lumber and cost will be different. This is what I use for my 17 and a half inch deep, 14 by three foot bed though. Six 16 foot Douglas fir two by sixes for the long sides two 10 foot Douglas fir two by sixes for the short sides, one eight foot one by four board for the vertical pieces. You'll need one six foot four by four for the corners. I had to buy an eight foot cedar one just because that's all they had. One 16 foot cedar one by six for the long side railings. One eight foot cedar one by six for the short side railing and brace, plus a box of two inch Spax exterior screws. From old projects, I already had everything except for the corner posts and the long top railing. So it ended up being about $70 for me. So I know this isn't as cheap as some builds, but for me, cost was not as important as time. My first beds were lower quality. They uh, weren't even a tenth as nice and they gave out after a couple years. So I really don't want to rebuild these again anytime soon. So for me, it was worth the extra effort and, and the extra cost to just make them a lot nicer and a lot sturdier. And, and they're also, they're going to my front yard. So <laughs> I definitely wanted them to look nicer. I hope this video helped you out. Remember to sign up for my email newsletter for more garden resources and keep gardening like a boss. And I'll see you guys soon.